What's going on guys? Welcome back to another O'Connell's story segment. And today I'm going to be, you know, telling the story about my experience as a special education student. Now, be advised that uh what I may say may not resonate with you because, you know, this is just my experience. You may have a, another experience if you're also an experiencer of this. So, um yeah, let's get right into it. So, I'd always felt that uh, that the special education system was like a, a dumping ground for students that couldn't keep up with the uh, educational system. And there are many factors that tie into that. A student may have not had the best educational background from the parents. Parents not caring for the educational needs, such as uh, reading or mathematics. Sometimes it isn't anyone's to blame. It's not anyone's fault to blame because even the parents do their best to provide the best educational background that they can. However, they may have not learned how to, you know, for example, read, do math, or they may have dropped out of elementary school a long time ago to do something else, and then they decide to raise a, ch a child. You know, there are many factors that tie into this. And, you know, these parents, they do, sometimes they do their best to provide, you know, the best of what they can comprehend but you know sometimes it isn't enough to survive in the school system and then there are other parents that can be mentally and physically abusive by the words that they tell their children making their child fearful of learning or making their child you know believe that they are stupid or so and so and when this starts this is the start of a young age from when the child starts to feel unworthy with a low self-esteem not to mention that they're labeled as different from the rest of the children within the general education class because there is a major separation uh, for example when I was in the special education system within middle school I did not really interact much with the uh, people within the general education classes we were like somewhere buried deep within the school while the uh, general education students were like more so you know interactive and whatnot within you know they were more of a community we were like kind of you know excluded from all that and yeah there were times where you know the general education students will come to like the uh, abandoned areas of the school but you know they're not really abandoned there it was just the basement floor you know where gym class would take place that's that would probably be the only time I feel general education students would like come to that to the basement floor but um I had a friend who would purposely come to class late because he did not want to be seen by uh uh the general education students of him going into the special education class because he didn't want to get made fun of or get labeled as different from the rest of the uh people and he most definitely didn't want to look down be, look be seen as you know less than compared to the people from the general education classes you know I'm sure he wanted to feel this sense of acceptance you know because we are social beings you know we want to feel accepted but when the case of the majority of the folks demean your significance and your worth then it becomes an issue not only will this be the start of mental blockages you know perhaps from childhood but also for within the um the school system your peers and whatnot um peers as in you know teachers or students just or, or other students just looking down on you and seeing you as unworthy but not only this but the start of the mental block just start when you know this same thing is reinforced day by day as you you know constantly attend these classes you're being reinforced day by day that you're different and unworthy or insignificant and these children start to actually believe these things so then like it's enforced day by day that you're mentally slow and that's when you know the individual starts to give in and then believe it and this is when they the um children or so or the people within the class they start to lose their motivation for education and learning and go on deriving into you know other topics you know their mindset is like what's the point of learning all this if i'm just slow anyway their futures and their aims are limited as they start to settle with minor goals. They start to feel their 
not worthy of you know accomplishing these big things and they get so used to that mindset that this is when they stop growing so speaking from experience i had i have experienced these uh these limited mindsets in the past you know living through you know the school indoctrinations the, the cultural indoctrinations the religious indoctrinations these habits became way too familiar for me and any sense of the idea of change became you know scary or uncomfortable for i had already had this limited mindset of you know you know the my childhood past you know um being talked down as you know less less than than the my other peers even some teachers looking down on their students and that actually does happen within the special education system but i know that not all teachers are like this but from my experience i had a lot of teachers that were like this and so the analogy that i use is uh the once roaring lion of that child now becoming converted into a shivering mouse the shivering mouse has spent its entire lifetime shivering and has forgotten that it was once a roaring lion that's the analogy I'm going to be using for, you know, some of the uh, some of my um, classmates within the special education system that just gave up. And so for me, I had the desire to become the roaring lion again. You know, my inspirations, the people that I have looked up, that I look up to, were you know, weren't like what no normal people don't really usually look up to within middle school. But you know, I looked up to like a. Uh, you know, people like Albert Einstein or just, you know, the big geniuses or the, the super big nerds, you know, or people who could, you know, recite pi at, you know, for very long periods of time or, you know, something like that. Or people like, you know, autistic savants, you know, these were my inspirations. So I wanted to find a way to reach new levels, you know, and not depend on the teachers within the, uh, the, the special education system. So, you know. In the past, I just went through YouTube, then I went to Google, you know, then I went, then I looked at some, you know, self-help books and whatnot. This was like during like ninth grade or so. And in ninth grade is when I first had access to the, uh, the internet. But yeah, my first time getting the internet, I was just looking at like Pokemon videos, listening to, to music and playing some RuneScape with a couple of people. But it was just later on down the road is when I, you know, actually looked at educating myself, you know, and that was like kind of the, that was the start of the, the ninth grade. So I feel that the special education students shouldn't, you know, learn, shouldn't be learning um, mediocre low level information 100%, 100% of the time, year by year. I feel what they do need is genuine counseling to get rid of their mental blockages. And once that's gone, once the mental blockages are gone, then the learning can take place. Because um, sometimes year by year, there's no academic evolution within special education. You know, like, for example, um, so like uh, you would take algebra, right? And then the next level would be ge geometry. And then the next level would be trigonometry, correct? but that that happens in a general education you know however within the um, special education we're just we just stay within algebra 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 there's no evolution there's no geometry you know that's until you know we reach you know high school i mean that yeah that's when i think that's when i started learning algebra that was in high school yeah yeah definitely but i know there are some kids that learned algebra way before that you know I feel that, uh, from my experience, the evolution is just static from, uh, from elementary to middle school. Oh, and uh, another person who experienced when I was in sixth grade in a special education class, all we did was just watch SpongeBob, and the teacher didn't really do much. You know, we just you know sat around. You know, but that was in my sixth grade class, and we had a very new teacher. It was very different from my fifth grade special education class. But, you know, we transferred schools. So, yeah. But I'm going to speak more about my, my experience later on in this video. All right. So, like, for 10th grade, we had a, so, quote, unquote, geometry class. It was labeled as a geometry class. It was a cover-up. But, you know, it, it, it was a geometry class. Okay. That's what it said, right? So, 
So like um, our teacher didn't uh, understand geometry very much. So she made us, you know, constantly do beginning algebra. And she would use the excuse like, oh, a lot of these kids don't understand the basic concepts, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, granted, some of that um, some of that is true because um, because like like uh, by the time they reach uh, high school, you know, they they they've already given up. Like I said before, they've they're doing some they're doing something else. Their mind is taken away from the education system com entirely. And like a lot of the students in my class just started causing trouble, arguing with the teachers. So and so, uh, some t um some of the students you know ended up skipping class because they just stopped caring, and and only like a select few of us stayed, you know, but but like like um what my teacher said about uh, the kids not understanding the uh, the basic concepts that wasn't going to slide by me very easily though. And so by the end of the year, um the school we had to take a geometry regent our our um kids you know. The students had to take a geometry regents, and if you don't know what the geometry regents is, it's a general state exam, so you know it's it's a huge deal, you know. So our teacher who taught the geometry class, you know, who was teaching us algebra all throughout, and did not at once mention geometry, any like lessons in geometry, but she was just teaching beginning algebra to us. Um, she started to you know. While she was handing out the uh, Regents exam, she started to uh, give us the answers to it. You know, she yeah, she was giving us the answers. You know, a lot of the me me and a lot of the other students were like so happy. Oh, cool, she's giving us the answers. Blah blah. blah you know, but you know, once we you know got our exams back, we we actually failed because she didn't really understand. She she didn't really understand geometry very well. You know, so this questions this brings a question to mind that um, you know, what what kind of teachers are they hiring for special education? You know, are is special education just like a experimental dumping ground for teachers to test out their teaching skills? I don't know. Who knows? And it felt like the school was you know playing us in some sense. And we felt like a outcast, as if they have, and they had, you know, already given up on us, you know. And I have like pl plenty more examples, you know, f from different teachers that you know that are pretty questionable. Like, why are they there, you know? And uh, so we're gonna jump back to middle school, you know. And so I had an insider, I had a, a cool teacher. He said that when he received my IEP, it said that, uh, it said that I was in a, I had the inability to th critically think, comprehend complex ideas or form sentences vocally. And this was during middle school or something like that, you know? So, and then he told me that um, I was the exact opposite after he got to know me more and, and got to get me to relax a little bit more, to ease up. And granted, the IEPs are not for the eyes of the students, but they were kept confidential between the guardians and the teachers. And my guardians didn't have much of an understanding of what was going on. And so to like skip back to high school now. And so to make a long story short, by the time I reached high school, uh, I was asked to uh, join the National Honor Society due to my academic excellence. You know, and I was... Uh, Acts to join up with the National Honor Society twice. So, so the, and so the first time, so they required a recruitment essay for you to join the National Honor Society. So for the first time, I had uh, a teacher from my English special education class, you know, help me with the essay. And, you know, I didn't get in. So the second time when I got another uh, request from the National Honor Society, I was like, hmm, should I really ask the same teacher to help me with my uh with the essay or should I go to another teacher you know should I go to an actual teacher that knows what they're doing 
an AP teacher, an advanced placement teacher, you know? So I started to, uh, you know, walk up the stairs, you know, the higher ups, the, the high places in the school, because that's where the advanced, the advanced placement classes were at. So I walked up, you know, I was like a foreigner there. <laughs> I walked up and then um, I asked uh, one of the AP teachers to like, hey, can you help me with this essay so-and-so? And that's exactly what he did. And not like, not only did he help me with the essay, I just, you know, sneaked in a, a few of my, uh, a few of my comic scripts, you know, cause I liked, you know, making comics, you know, I like writing stories. So, you know, I sent, I, I gave him some of my scripts. I, I showed him a first episode of my, of my, uh, script and, in, uh, you know, he, he, he corrected it. He read it, you know, he read it. He correct, he corrected everything. He, he saw that I made a lot of, you know, really, really horrible grammar and punctuation mistakes and some spelling mistakes. But, you know, through that process of me connecting with that teacher from my, you know, from my scripts, that's how I learned how to also write better and learn how to flow well with my writing as well. And there was another uh, level of special education within my middle school with, uh, with uh, um, kids with uh, autism and, AD and ADD. And I don't exactly feel that these are, you know, disabilities. I just feel that we shouldn't try to fit these children into a system that cannot assist them. Like there are inspiring documentaries of a child named Owen, an autistic child named Owen, who learned to speak through uh, dis watching Disney movies or so. And by the time, you know, he has his own story. You can look him up, you know, just look up child who learns to speak through Disney's Disney movies. He ended up making his own animation, etc. But, you know, this video is getting long, you know, I'm branching out with my content so I may tell a lot more life stories or so so leave a like comment subscribe if you enjoyed the uh, the comment I mean if you enjoyed the content you know leave a comment too but uh, yeah peace out guys